the plan for today. I'm sorry for making your job harder. There's only more than we said in this case, so it's all good. All right, the plan for today. First thing I gotta do, I'm gonna close my eyes. I do not cheat when I do this, okay? Show of hands, how many of you have turned in a rough draft to turnitin.com? How many people do we have? Somebody count those hands for me. How many is that? Like a two-thirds majority of the class. <laughs> All right. I'd say it's an equal split, actually. Oh, no, no. All right, put your hands down, because I, I don't cheat. I don't. Okay. Um, okay. I just want to check, because that means there, there's kind of two sets of directions I have to give you based upon your answer to that question. First, if you <clears throat> have turned in a rough draft to turnitin.com, uh, that means you can do the peer review. The way turnitin works, I think, it will not give you somebody else's paper in the peer review unless you have also turned one in. So that's what you guys will do, whoever you are. Um, you'll go to turnitin.com, you'll go to where you uh, turn in your assignments, and then there's a peer review button, click that. It should give you somebody else's paper. I try to keep it um, somewhat spared when it comes to peer review. I, I believe there's only four questions. They're somewhat open-ended. They're somewhat, uh, they, they require some thought but there's only four of them, and I'd like you to take those on. Reasons for that, I wanna remind you. Number one, it's just a nice thing to do. You get somebody else's work, give it an honest shot, right? Secondly though, the reason you actually do peer review, if you have ever in your life looked at your work and thought something to the effect of, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with this, but I know something's wrong with it. If you've ever felt that way, that's what this exercise is for. It's much easier to look at somebody else's work, kind of pick it apart, all of a sudden you say, oh yeah, this doesn't, they need to do this, like that, that whole thing. You're building your editorial muscle when you peer review. And the idea is, you do that enough, you get that muscle stronger, it's easier to look at your work critically, right? That's what this is for. So whenever you engage in peer review, I do ask for, selfishly, for your sake, actually give it a shot, right? Like put something into it. And I say that because I know how people tend to approach peer review. <laughs> All right, so that's the first set of instructions. If you've turned in a rough draft, you can do the peer review. I want you to go do that here in a moment. If not, your instructions are these. Um, the two things. One, I would, I would work on that peer review if I were you. I, that's what you should be doing, right? Uh, but number two, I also emailed you guys the peer review questions. I think uh, oh, yeah. it, it was this morning. Um, so if you're in that boat, uh, you can't really look at anybody else's paper to do that, right? But with wherever you're at in your process, hopefully you have some something written, uh, you, can, you can still look at those questions. You can still apply them to your work. And I would actually say, when you finish the peer review, if you're doing that, you can do the same thing if you like. I think it can be helpful, especially because you've just done those, you just looked at somebody else's stuff. Okay, now I'm gonna look at my work with the same ideas in mind. You, you're probably liable to catch some things. So that's the plan. If you're peer reviewing, do that, basically. If not, work on your own stuff and or take the peer review questions and peer review yourself. You can do that, right? Second part of the game. It's not fun, I should find another noun, it's not a game. Anyway, second part of class, um, as you finish the peer review, whatever that looks like for you, I'm gonna give you some time to draft. So you can immediately just, all right, I'm done with that, cool. You can move into working on your own stuff. I'm gonna give you some time to do that. At some point in the process, I will stop you, we will talk about works cited. It's gonna be great. That was a lie, it's works cited. But I can do it quickly, we do need to do it, Briefly, okay, just to make sure uh, we, we understand some things about that component of the paper. Um, provided all that, I'll let you go a little early, okay? So get some work done, I'll be here for you, but again, I think most of this really depends on you today. Um, go for it. All right. Briefly, I want to talk to you guys about the worst side of it. Um, now there are reasons, I save it for now. Number one, it is kind of tedious. It's a works cited page. This won't be fun. I can do it quickly, but 
I know none of us are like, yeah, let's do that. Um, but also, up until this point in the semester, uh, like with your first paper, you had one source. And I just feel like, take your best shot, see what you do, really not sweating it for that first paper, right? Second paper, you have four sources. And at this point, things just get more complicated. Um, and so I do it here. Your third paper, you'll, you'll have a couple sources as well, so it's good to have it under our belts, but that's why I wait until now. Uh, also, I just think we have more important material to go over, right, than the works cited page. To begin with, and of course I'll take questions at the end, um, most of your formatting when it comes to a works cited page carries over from your paper. So it's still gonna be Times New Roman 12, still gonna be double spaced, all that jazz. Um, a couple differences you will have course, you need to <clears throat> title the section just like you would. I can probably make this a little bigger. And maybe you may, well, I'm missing something. All right, double space is on, so I can get rid of that piece. There we go. All right. All right. So we're excited. Now we're ready to do our entries. We need one for each source, of course. Uh, I'm gonna stop rhyming now. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through this in two different ways. The first way is sort of the classic approach. Namely, that would be, you need your sources. In this case, I'm gonna talk to you about Lonegan real quick. And you need a style guide. Uh, when I was a student, you'd have to actually buy a style guide for a comp course, and it would be anywhere from 50 to like 60 or $70. Uh, it was, yeah, it's pretty rough. Uh, those days are largely behind us, and I'm going to show you. I think I've probably mentioned this before, but still. The OWL at Purdue stands for Online Writing Lab at Purdue. This is actually useful for any class you might have a paper in, uh, outside of all these damn ads. Uh, they, they cover MLA, APA, and Chicago. Occasionally, you will have an insane professor that wants you to write in Chicago. Um, so that's all here. Again, we're worried about MLA today. And uh, yeah, cookies, thank you. So um, there's all kinds, of, there's too much, Jesus Christ. There's too much information, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but a, a positive way to spin that is damn near any question you might have, the owl will have some kind of an answer. So it can be super helpful. Uh, most of your questions, though, you want to go to the formatting and style guide. Uh, again, uh, over here on the left, this is the menu uh, that you really want to navigate. Again, there's general stuff here for everything. Uh, a couple things I want to show you. They do have sample papers, which are crazy helpful. Um, you'll see it here. It shows you both how your paper should look, but it also gives um, all kinds of little uh, dialogue bubbles for like why they're doing certain things. Uh, this is super helpful. For our purposes today, of course, we're worried about the works cited page. Here's them talking about the basic format, and again, they break it down at length. Um, but I'm mostly interested in the specific citations. So books, at least one of your sources is a book, Vonnegut. You would scroll down, and you wouldn't maybe assume this to begin with. I love how somebody's getting shot on the side of us talking about works cited. Um, in this particular case, we're doing a book with one author. They're going to break down for you first all the information you need and what it looks like right there. But if you're the type to appreciate an example, and I know I'm the type, they give you a couple here. They're going to do that with every kind of entry, right? They're going to keep breaking it down. There's, there's little changes depending upon what kind of source you're looking at, what kind of information you have. You don't always have all the information, right? They do all that for you. Um, this would be, classically speaking, how you would do this. You would go to a style guide like this. You would find the requisite information uh, in a book, for instance. If you turn a couple pages in, there's gonna be a page with all kinds of very, very, very small font, the whole page. This is all legal stuff publication information, whether or not it's in the Library of Congress, this one happens to be, um, all, all that stuff. And you just kind of pick, and, uh, you pick through 
Uh, this was published in 2009 by the Dial Press Trade Paperback, uh, which if you go further down is actually an imprint of Random House. Uh, Vonnegut obviously wrote it, the original copyright is 1969, all this stuff. <clears throat> and you kind of sort out what you need, you make it look like this guy right here, that's your entry. That's the classic way to do it, that's the way I had to do it uh, for several years, at least in undergrad. It's kind of arduous. The way you will probably do it. This is here though, I want you to know this is here. And you want to check your work, you want to check your citations, all that stuff. This is here for you, it's free. The way you will probably do it though, at least to begin with, is with EasyBib. Or some other generator. I don't know what's cool now, I don't know what you might use. EasyBib is what we used. I'm sure you have something else. But they're all basically the same. So we're gonna create a citation. We're gonna watch people sleep first. It's a book. Jesus Christ, these ads. I'm gonna get a little smaller so I can better navigate the ads. All right. I'm actually gonna create a manual citation. I know you probably wanna look up the thing because uh, that is easier. In my experience, though, that tends to lead to problems. I would avoid it. Let me get off this for a second. All right. So all the information you wanna put in as much as you have. The other way to say that is you don't always have all this information. For instance. Um, the Vonnegut I'm using is technically a particular edition. It's just, we don't need that, you know, there's no volumes, it's not a part of a series. Um, so it's just, you won't always have some of this. The ones they helpfully star for you, you do want to try to make sure to find. Um, but sometimes, weirdly, you won't have an author for an article, depending on where you find it, right? Like things like that. You only put in the information you have. Um, Oh, the other thing I want to point out to you real quick. If you're not sure how to find the information I keep talking about uh, in a book at the very least, something like Slaughterhouse-Five, Stupid Famous, you can go to Amazon. And if you scroll down on the particular copy you have, most of the time, once you get past all the them trying to sell you things, you get to product details. This is a lot of the information EasyBib is gonna want. You got your publisher, uh, with a date, you have ISBNs, uh, obviously you know the author, the title, stuff like that. So you can also find it here. Anyway, what's it going to look like when we actually do this? That's five, we can skip all of that. Publisher, I'm going to go ahead and do Random House because that's honestly what it is. I happen to know this already. This is in the book. You can find it on the page I talked about. Uh, Random House is in New York. Most major publishers are in New York, but you do want to check. And uh, I'm actually, I'm going to roll with the original copyright just because I want to. All right. There's our citation. We're going to copy it. Thank you. And we're going to go back to our paper. That looks pretty good. Uh, there's a couple issues I want to highlight for you though. Number one, if you notice, when I click on it, the ruler moved over. Uh, when you, that's enough, I'm gonna have to retry this. Hang on. Let's see if this is off. There we go. When you copy and paste from any place, any place at all, most of the time, it's gonna bring formatting with it. What that means is, what should happen when you put text into a document, it should obey the rules you've already set up, the formatting you've already set up. Double space, Times New Roman, the ruler, all this other stuff that you like kind of don't even know why it's there. Those are rules that the document has in place, okay? And they do matter, I'm gonna, and I'm showing you why right now. But when I pasted this, it took just a little bit of formatting from the web page. In this case, it messed with my ruler. That only matters because I'm gonna put in more entries and that guy is gonna jack up the rest of them. So I fixed it, because I knew to. You may not know that. You need to, to the best of your ability, try to stay on top of it, especially if you're copying and pasting anything into your document. Here are the reasons why. Number one, sometimes 
depending on where you find your text, whatever you're copying and pasting, it's gonna bring all kinds of crap with it. Uh, this was a really easy fix, really small thing. Um, I've seen other instances, uh, so in your first papers, for instance, if you copy and pasted maybe like some of the poem, you didn't wanna bother typing it, I get it. Well, it's gonna bring whatever formatting from that PDF or online, wherever you found it, and if you don't fix it, the rest of your paper you type after that copy and pasted bit is going to be in that screwed up font. Some of you did that. Um, I don't mind. I don't like it because now your formatting is messed up, but I don't particularly mind. The reason this matters, there are professors who exist. I don't count them as friends, but they exist who consider copying and pasting to be some form of plagiarism. I find that to be very silly. But if you end up in a class with this kind of a person, they will not consider that very silly. Plagiarism isn't something you really want to mess with, right? So how do you circumvent this? Number one, again, when you copy and paste anything, we're talking about works cited, but I'm saying anything, double check it. Some of you, for instance, don't realize, uh, I, I saw this a couple times on the first paper, you copy and pasted something into your, into your paper, and you did cite it, which is what's important, but you copy and pasted it, and it brought with it like a gray background or something wacky. That's so obvious, right? And now, if I'm a professor who considers that plagiarism and I see gray backgrounds in your paper, all these wacky alarm bells are going off, right? This creates problems for you. So fix that stuff. In terms of the rest of the works cited spiel, uh, here's our entry, it looks really good. Um, the other thing you need to know though, with books, a lot of the time, it's just not a ton of information, right? So it's gonna be a single line, it's gonna be fine. With articles especially, the titles are longer, uh, there's oftentimes more information with those, like you'll have volumes and, and different publication information because they're out of journals, basically. The entries are going to be longer. They might go to a second line. Let me do that real quick. All right. Work cited entries, all you got to remember, they use what's called a hanging indent. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's the reverse of how you indent a paragraph. So in a paragraph, this first line would be indented and everything else would be on the margin. Work cited is just the opposite. First line, margin, every other line on an entry gets indented. And there's actually an easy way to do that. I'm going to show you. You could just tab everything over, but that gets really dicey. I'm not going to go into why, but if you try that, you will very quickly understand what I'm talking about. What I would actually recommend, and every word processor is a little bit different, but they all have it in the same place when you can find it. I'm actually going to have to find it. Look, i got to make this smaller again. All right, oh, all right. So in docs, which is what I'm in, uh, it's probably under indentation options. Yeah, this is a special indent. It's hanging. It does it for you, okay? That's how I would do it. Uh, in Word, I think it's under like the paragraphs section. Uh, and again, you wanna look for indent, you wanna look for special indent, hanging. It'll, it'll fix it all for you. Uh, the only other thing I would tell you, your works cited entries are alphabetized by whatever first word you have. Usually it's the author, but again, there are rare cases where you don't have the author for some reason. Uh, so it's just whatever language is first. On it, it's gonna be way down your page probably. Um, but depending on what else you have, you know, that's, that's how you organize that information, is alphabetically. I did that as quickly as I could. Are there any questions about works cited stuff? Good. Okay. Go for it. Uh, do we have to put the um <clears throat> uh, the day that we found this article as well? Yes. The okay. day you accessed it. And you can ballpark that. Um, there are reasons for doing that, which again, I'm not going to go into. Uh, but yeah, and, and again, if you use a bib generator, they should ask for that, the date that you accessed it. Mm -hmm. And if you're not sure, what you can also do 
is just go back and make sure you can still access it and you could just say, oh, today's date, like that's fine. But yeah, okay. you do want to provide that with uh, most online sources, um, nearly positive, they want the date accessed is what they call it. Got it. Because the internet can change, right? So if you include the date access that says, oh, when I looked at it, it looked like this, and maybe somebody updates it two months after that, that's a different source all of a sudden, is why you have that. Very specific, but good question. Any other questions about this? All right. Never sure. All right. Um, are there any questions right now about the paper? Anything at all? Yes. How many words, is there a specific on how many words does it have to be? There's a page count uh, on the prompt. I believe it's four. Um, rule of thumb there is you want, any anytime you have a page requirement, you want to be at least near the bottom of that page. Because some of you are still, I think, under the misconception that like three pages is, oh, I'm on the third page, so I'm good. It's like, no, that's two pages, right? If you're just like, it's just... That's two and a half. <laughs> if that. Um, but yeah, so so in this case, four pages, you want to be near-ish the bottom of that fourth page. Or over. Get on to the fifth page. Go crazy. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much what that means. Got it. And again, you have four sources. One of them is a novel. You got plenty of information to, to try to work into this. Like most students... Their big problem on this paper is uh, they don't want it to be too long, in, in my experience. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Okay. Um, I want to remind you of a couple things, and then, as I promised, I will let you go a little bit early. Number one. Uh, oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Sorry, I was like, that's not. Uh, your final draft, I would hope you know this, is due this Friday. Uh, by midnight, so to be perfectly clear, 11.59 p.m. Friday night, it's due, okay? So you got a bit of time on it still, but you want to make that happen. Also, for next week, we are watching Die Hard. And I wanna be clear about this because I've had a couple people ask, we are not watching the movie in class. I don't know, I don't know who you think I am. We are not doing that. We will watch scenes and we will talk about it. We will, uh, we will start next week practicing the same kind of analysis we did with Fairchild and Vonnegut, we're gonna be doing that with a movie now. Uh, but the idea is you will have watched it prior to Monday's class. So sometime this weekend, after the paper, do the paper first, get that done, okay? All I'm asking of you this weekend, sit down for like an hour and a half or something, watch a movie. That's all you gotta do for homework for Monday, okay? I am curious, I do have to ask. Has anyone, this is from, uh, granted, it's from 1988, this movie. Has anyone not seen the original Die Hard? That's wild to me. Okay. It's, uh, it's an 80s action movie. So if you've ever seen any, like, old Sylvester Stallone or Arnold Schwarzenegger or, or Van Damme or old Bruce Willis in some cases, like, just 80s action movie. That is what this is. Uh, it's rated R, I should mention. Sometimes people watch stuff with their parents. I think this one is pretty safe. There might be a couple moments where like, you're not super happy to be there with your mom. I don't know, I'm just putting that out there. Uh, but yeah, I think it's fun. I think it'll be a fun way to end the semester. It's a little lower key than what I've asked of you thus far. Uh, but that is what we need to have for Monday. Uh, what else? Ooh, just to remind you, someone told me, I have not checked yet, I, but. She seems like a very trustworthy individual. Somebody in another class told me uh, you can find it on Hulu, which does cost money, and you can also apparently right now find it on Peacock, which is free. Um, I assume that means there are commercials involved. Amazon Prime, if you, so if you have Amazon Prime, you can watch it for free as well. Good to know. I mean, again, this is one of those, this is part of why I chose this movie. It's kind of everywhere. So, so you should be able to find it. Uh, but do the paper first, get that knocked out, and then I would say it's a little bit of a break. Watch the movie. We'll come in next week. We'll talk about it. Okay. All right. I'll see you guys on Monday. Thank you. <laughs>